Before we get started, make sure you rate the show five stars and follow us on Spotify. We are in a brand new studio today. You might hear a little bit of echo. There's a few teething issues, but you're here with us now. So let's get into it. Welcome everyone to the Sunday Run Podcast. We've got another big episode for you today and I'm really excited to be here. Last week you met my mum. I mean, introducing you to my family slowly. Um, and it was cool to see like a lot of you guys get a lot out of that. I think particularly a lot of women in corporate are most of the messages I've gotten. Um, you're as, you're as kind of, you know, excited by that episode as I was. So I'm, I'm so glad you got something out of it and yeah, I'll keep introducing you to my family slowly. I do want to make this podcast very running centric today. Obviously we lacked that a little bit last week with mum. So um, yeah, a lot of running stuff today. And I wanted to really talk about like being a hybrid athlete, which is a bit of a buzzword and it's a bit cringe, uh, but I'll, I'll get into all that in a sec. Firstly, if you are running today, we're here with you. Hopefully you just started this podcast and you're either getting into it, you're doing a little bit of stretching to, to warm up and get going, or you've just started. So I'm here with you all, all along this run. And, and that's, it's going to be a fun run today. I feel like we could do, you know, five Ks or so, and I'll check in and give you little tips along the way. I went to Morgan Wallen the other night. He is a country singer and he had a show here in Melbourne at Rod Laver Arena. It was incredible. Honestly, so good. I am actually wearing his merch right now. So if you're watching this show, uh, you can see that. If not, I look really snazzy in it. Um, <laughs> and that's exciting. I just enrolled in the oh, enrolled. Sounds like I'm enrolling you, but in the Great Ocean Road running race, I'm doing the half marathon there, and it seems like I'm going to see a lot of you guys there. So looking forward to that. I'm going alongside my uh, shoe sponsor, which is Brooks, and going to do the half marathon. I had a lot of people asking like why I'm not doing the full marathon. It's honestly it's a good question. I probably should have enrolled in it, but I didn't. So yeah, I'm going to be doing the half marathon there, and then I reckon. I'll be doing a full marathon soon after that. I've like just started a new kind of running program, which I'm really testing out before I re release to you guys. And it's kind of scaled it all back for me. So I am kind of back down to running. I think it was 28 Ks last week. I think I'm up to 30, 32 this week, 34 next week. And obviously just going to keep climbing up. But it's really exciting because this is like one of – I, I made this alongside my coach and it's like a really well structured and safe program. So I'm really looking after my body and I'm also like running just oh, four days, four or five days a week. So it's very exciting and um, I can't wait to show you guys. Last week I released the Sunday run program. So we did the week one through to week six and I released them week by week. Um, and then obviously last week I just released them as a full bundle and you guys can go and pick those up. Um, just by putting your uh, email address into the link in my bio and then you get sent it straight away. So that's what we did last week. This next week, I think I'm going to be releasing kind of road to a half marathon, road to full marathon, whatever you want. It'll be beginner, intermediate and advanced. And I think it's going to change the game. I've had a few questions lately regarding weight training, resistance training and running. And that's exactly what this next program is going to be. So again, just giving it all away for free and you guys get to do it. Hopefully if this maintains enough interest, I'll just like keep pumping these out. Um, but I am aware that, you know, some people have fallen off from it. It is more and more difficult. I understand that, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a fun time to be alive and it's, I really enjoy just like providing all this stuff and, and helping you guys out as, as much as I possibly can. Today, hybrid athlete. Hybrid athlete's guide to running is what I want to talk about. What is a hybrid athlete? To me, it's a little bit cringeworthy. Like it's a buzzword. It's a buzz name. It's not quite like it's obviously not very scientific, but it, it, it's kind of someone who does weight training, does running, like does multiple different things. You're not just like sectioned into a box, like a bodybuilder. Like you can't, it's not like just one dimensional. So you can go for a run, but then you can also lift weights. It's something I absolutely love to do. And, you know, some would say like, you know, what's the old saying about like master of many trades, yeah, whatever, you know, that one master and trades or whatever. 
I kind of agree. To, what is it, Kaylee? Can you? Uh, no, nah, it's master of none is the second bit. So there's, there's a, there's, so, yeah, Kaylin's going to look it up, guys. Otherwise, we won't be able to continue this podcast. But yeah, essentially, like, I don't think that's the case because you, if you're not an athlete, like if you're not a professional athlete, what is it? Jack of all trades, master of none. There it is. Jack of all trades, master of none. We got there. Thank you. Um, yeah, essentially, like, I think it is the best way to train. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make the Olympics in, in any realm. I just love being fit and healthy. Um, and I think this is the best way to go about it. So a hybrid athlete is someone who does multiple things. I train in the gym. I can lift a fair bit of weight, like within reason. I'm, I'm definitely not a power lifter. But then I'm also fit and healthy enough to go for a run, hopefully run a marathon soon. You know, first person that kind of comes to mind is, is Nick Bear. If you guys haven't seen him, probably check him out. Um, and I think it's just like really important. Most people have the weight training stuff down pat. Like they've got it figured out. Um, a lot of men usually like figure that out early on. And it is definitely like a maturity thing to start running. Like it's a maturity thing to in- introduce running into your life because as a young guy and especially as a skinny young guy, it's really hard to like put on muscle and you always want to put on more muscle mass. So the second you start introducing running, like obviously you need to be in more of a calorie surplus and it's just harder and harder to put on muscle. The maturity comes into it because as you mature, you realize you actually don't need that much size. Like stop trying to stop that bigger X your stuff and don't worry about that. Like just try and focus on being fit and healthy and how you feel. So like the benefits of adding running into, into weight training, well, I think there's, you know, clear one, but the, the first thing that comes to mind is like the mental benefits. It's, it's so brilliant for your mental, like firstly, the challenge side of it, like you're going to be challenged with running and you kind of start way back from the start. And that is really good for you. Like learning new things is really good for you. And it's something I really recommend. On like the other side, like especially for, for women, obviously like, um, you know, often like building size isn't kind of the goal. Uh, so like the hybrid athlete thing, it, it might, the, there might be more struggle with trying to get it into the gym. And I couldn't recommend getting into the gym enough. It is so brilliant. It's so like empowering. It's something you really should look at doing. I would, whilst I like really do encourage those F45s and like the classes and the Pilates, I think they're great. I think getting yourself under a barbell and learning how to squat, learning how to bench press, like the normal compound movements, it's going to be life changing for you. And you need strength, especially as you get older. Like you need to keep building strength. So where do we start with it? Like, how do you incorporate running into your training? And I think, you know, early on, you don't want to structure it too much. Just like lift weights and go for a run. Obviously, separate them throughout the day. Um, But as you get better and better, you want to structure that. So I tend to go for runs. Well, I I run four or five days a week. So there's going to have to be crossovers, obviously, of when I run and I lift weights on the same day. And normally... So my coach actually recommended that I lift weights in the morning and then go for a run in the afternoon, which is like, to be honest, it's not as fun doing it that way, but it is safer. You know, the the theory is that you want to be like with your full strength when you're lifting weights because it can get a little bit dangerous. Whereas if you're a little bit like, you know, weaker in your legs when you're going for a run, well, that's fine. Like you're going to make it work. So how do we incorporate it? I like to run a structure of like, I go for a run in the morning and then I weight train at night. So Mondays I'll do a really long run and then Monday, so Monday mornings I do a long and slow run and then Monday night or Monday afternoon-ish I'll do like a really light leg session and that's just because I, I, I just want to maintain enough muscle and prevent injuries. Tuesday, um, what do I do? Yeah, Tuesday's a quick run. So Tuesday's a, a moderate run. I'll run in the morning and then weight train in the afternoon. That weight training is a lot like it's a bigger upper sesh. Obviously, your legs aren't as sore and you can just kind of get straight into it. Wednesday, uh, run. Oh, sorry. Wednesday is my rest day for, from running. And then I'll also hit a larger leg session. Uh, Thursday is my quickest run, which is like often like at the moment, six Ks of hard running. And I'll do that in the morning and then I think I'll do, I I won't train legs that day, which is good. And then Friday, 
straight into legs and I do like some track work and, and it's like pretty easy stuff. So figuring out how you're going to incorporate it is like pretty important and I think it's going to be the key to you maintaining and continuing to do this. I bring all of this up with the thing in mind that I'm going to have a full program for you guys in regards to this. I, it'll be like you'll just download it and I'm going to do that week by week thing so you'll need to sign up from the start. Nutrition and recovery is pretty important and I think like understanding nutrition is going to be the ticket to you succeeding in this realm. Um, I like to eat a fairly high carb diet and it's something that kind of, I don't know, it's, it's, it, it's not easy. Like it's something you learn a, a, over time. And for me, I like to carb up before a run. So I'll have two pieces of toast before I go for a run, especially the longer runs, try and hydrate as much as you can. I find if I don't have a lot of water before I go for a run, about three Ks in, I start getting black spots in my eyes. And that's two things. Firstly, I'm not warming up properly. So like the blood flow isn't correct. And like two Ks in my body's like, what is going on? There's too much blood going everywhere. And the second thing is I just get dehydrated, get really thirsty if I don't do that. So make sure you hydrate a lot. And I like to eat two pieces of toast before a run. After a run, you need to be eating something high protein. It's really common, especially in women, to limit their, your protein. And you're going to notice there's side effects. Like sometimes your it affects your sleep. You There's a good reason, like there's a, the reason you're very sore the next day is often because you um, haven't had enough protein. So make sure your protein intake is up. They say it's like two grams per kilogram of body weight. So let's say I weigh 50 kilos and I'm going to have 100 grams worth of protein per day. So figure that out and make sure you get it right. Like it's, it is really important. If you're running, I'm here with you. Keep going. That first K, I, always, I say it literally every single podcast, but that first K is always the worst. And it's, it's something I think, especially as you get older, like you just need to break your body into it and, and let it figure out. You know, like let your body figure it out. Let the blood start circulating and keep going one foot in front of the other. I always find early on in the run, it's a good idea to like focus on form. Keep those arms moving. You know, I, it, it's a good idea to look up how like on actual running form and, and figure out ideal running form because I would recommend kind of getting into that. Uh, but yeah, first kilometer, think about your running form. Keep breathing a lot. It's common that you like forget to breathe properly in the first um, kilometer because you're not you know, you're not puffed. So make, focus on your breathing. Um, and yeah, like just keep going. I haven't done, have you guys heard of this um, nose breathing thing? Because it's not something I've gotten into and I, it doesn't look overly fun. So common injuries in being a hybrid athlete and how to prevent them. I think like your injuries are going to come from running people forget how high impact running is, but there are ways to prevent this. Firstly, like early days running, shin splints, um, like sore knees, those kind of things. First thing we can do to prevent them is get some good shoes. And whether you use my sponsor Brooks or you look at another shoe brand, that's fine. Just make sure you got some really good dedicated runners. Spend a little bit more for it. And what you wanna look, look for is like a longer term basic runner, not a race shoe. So you'll see a lot of stuff online and like if it says it's a race shoe or it has a carbon plate, it is not gonna be suitable for everyday runs. Now, if you can afford it, like I'd recommend getting an everyday runner and then also a race shoe because when you put those race shoes on, you're so quick. Like it takes genuine seconds off your time. So look into that, but firstly focus on getting like a really nice runner. Um, Brooks do some great ones. Hawkers do some great ones. I think they've got the Clifton Nines, um, if anyone wants to look at those. But, like, investing in good runners is going to – often will prevent good sh uh, prevent shin splints, um, and it's also going to save your knees a whole lot. I, I don't know if anyone has taken notice in, in runners over the years, but they've gotten kind of thicker, and there's a reason for that. Like, when you get a good pair of runners and you're running on the road, it feels unreal. Let's get into shin splints. So now, firstly, I'm not a physio and I'm not telling you how or what to do, but I've spoken to my um, physios and, and exercise, sports and exercise scientists about this and they've all kind of said the same thing. Firstly, you know, you want to kind of let them rest. 
I think a common thing is to go harder when you have shin splints, but that's just not the case. You need to let them rest. Once they've rested, you need to build up the muscles around it. So front tibialis raises are really handy. Search those up. And then you want to slowly increase the volume going through your legs. So don't just start doing 15K straight away. Like start by running or start by walking, you know, for two kilometers and then start by running for two kilometers and then run for three kilometers, slowly build it up. And generally speaking, that is the ticket to having, yeah, to like increasing your, sorry, to coming back from an injury. So there you go. Um, knee, knee pain and stuff. I'm certainly not qualified to talk about it, but it is common. And I think a lot of people are, are deterred from running because of the potential of knee pain or like they've heard an old wives tale about how running running's just really bad for your knees and like, you know, all of that. Yes, it probably isn't great if you just come straight in and start running half marathons. You can build up your body. It doesn't matter what age you are. My mum is bloody, I don't even know, she's 55, 56 or something. I, just, I think she's older than that. Good question. I should, I should know that. <laughs> But she's, she's just started running, essentially. She used to do a little bit of running when she was younger, but nothing compared to, like, what she's doing now. So that is something to go off. Like, you can do it. You just need to build up slowly. And you have so many resources now to get into it and actually, like, build on it. So, yeah, I would highly recommend um, looking into that. So, yeah, the hybrid athlete thing, look, it's a bit of a buzzword. It essentially means you bloody lift weights and you go for runs as well. Or you lift weights and you do something else. But I would highly recommend looking into doing that. I, it's, I've just quit footy and it's something I'm actually really struggling with is lifting weights and like going for all these runs and not being able to compete, like not being able to put all that work you do into some kind of competition or some kind of performance element. That's why I like I'm really attracted to things like trail running or like, you know, going on hikes and stuff. At least when you lift those weights, like you've got in mind that you're able to carry, you know, a little bit of extra weight or you've got in mind that you're able to go a little bit further. So I promise you, if you change your reasons for fitness to like have, be more objective, you will enjoy it a whole lot more. It's probably something I'm, I'm learning now and not just in terms of fitness, like in terms of life is it's so much about the journey you know, like I've, I've had a crazy last couple of months um, where my, like, I've just like grown so much on social media, which is like what I'm, which is like my metrics of success at the moment, I suppose. And like growing that much is, is great, but it's easy to be just like completely forget about the fact it's all about the journey. Like what, what is your, what's going to be your parameter for happiness? And you know, if it's followers, well, they bloody dry up pretty quick. So that'll make you sad. If it's something else, you know, like just lifting weights to get to a certain um, bench press. Well, like once you get there, like, yeah, you keep going, but you kind of have a flat line. So for your own sanity, I would recommend starting to think about, you know, some kind of objective with all your training. If you're, if you're like really new to running, make that like going on, like mum wants to do the Mother's Day Classic. Let's say she does a, the 5K. Like it's pretty simple, pretty easy. At no particular pace, you can walk throughout some of it. But just having that kind of goal, I really do think is is important and it's um, something I do. So that's kind of hybrid athlete and that's what I'd recommend. Got a bit of a mailbag here and I'm keen to answer some of your questions. As usual, you guys always like send in so many questions. I actually didn't put up a mailbag story for this episode um, I've got some crazy good questions for the next episode, but this episode I've just kind of gone back through some other mailbags and I'm going to answer them. Um, Elise May Mason says, can anyone run a marathon? Firstly, I haven't run a marathon, but I strongly believe anyone can run a marathon with the right amount of training. Could you go out and just run a marathon off the, off the bat? I'd say some people could. I, I genuinely think that. You might need to stop and walk through some of it, but I genuinely think a lot of people, granted, you know, you're not morbidly obese or terminally ill, like you would be able to get 42 kilometres into either a walk slash run. So, yeah, I think I think most people can do it. And, gee, some people have bloody do marathons every day of the year. Like there's some crazy people out there and you just need to draw inspiration from those types. Hemi... 
Uh, Hammer Hammy Cooks says weight weights program for a marathon. I want a weight program for a marathon? Yeah, it's coming. I I like I've got it all sorted. Um, talking to coaches like sports and exercise scientists, uh, physios. We're putting all of this together, and I'm going to be doing that weekly release again. So, starting in like a couple of weeks, every single Sunday, it's going to get sent to your email, and you guys are going to be from Monday through to Sunday have like a structured program. I'm going to have, I think, like home weights training. So, like you can do resistance stuff. I'm talking goblet squats, like using chairs and stuff to, like, get yourself ready for it. And then I'm also going to have a section for the gym. I think, um, but yeah, I. I don't know. It's it's costing me a bit of money and time, but man, I think it's so worth it because it, I gen- genuinely get such a kick out of it. Brock Alexander says, "How do you stay stay so consistent with your training habits and nutrition?" Yeah, I mean, like right now, I'm consistent, but like I'm not always consistent. I go through dips. I find having a structured routine is the trick, and it's the ticket. And everyone should have a structured routine if they're somewhat serious about their training. Uh, because it keeps you accountable but to be honest mate in terms of like like motivation and stuff probably motivation at an all-time low for me right now I, I feel like so unmotivated to be honest to even get out of bed sometimes like i i just i can't I, I don't know what it is these last couple of weeks i just i'm like what's the point um and that's me being completely honest and it's probably not what you guys want to hear but um yeah i don't know at at the moment i'm like what's the point i just quit footy to do this running stuff and then at times it's like well fuck it it doesn't even like what am i doing doing all this running stuff you know um and like like why why do i do it and obviously the why comes back to helping people but you know then you go a bit of you get a few messages from like like hate messages you get a few comments and stuff and it's like fuck what's the point um but yeah so I guess that always comes back to not relying on motivation and like really relying on um, discipline. Like every morning I get up probably 6 a.m. Between 5.30 and 6.30, I'll, I'll wake up every single, it doesn't matter like what time I went to bed the night before. And that just comes down to discipline. And I'm not superhuman about it. Like if I, I know that if I stay in bed, it's my whole day is gonna be ruined. So. In terms of training and nutrition, like, um, well, yeah, training side, it's just like discipline, nutrition. I've, I've really got to work on it, to be honest. Thank you for the question, mate. Um, running and gym plan to improve both. Yes, that's on the way. Sorry, that's a, um, shouldn't have had that question in. Claire Steph Baxter says, I think it's Claire Steph Baxter, says supplements for running. Love your stuff. Thank you, Claire. I love you. Um, yeah, supplements for running is a good one. So, that's a fantastic question. I think you can break it down into a couple of things. First, firstly, hydration. Uh, secondly, is recovery. So, like hydration. Well, yeah, nutrition, hydration, recovery. Let's start with nutrition. So, I mean, you're probably not going to need any supplements for that as such. You just need to be eating in a high carb diet or like being carving up before runs because that's what our body uses to expend energy. So, if you're really struggling to get carbohydrates in, you can actually get a carbohydrate powder that you put into a drink, you shake it up, you drink it. It's like quick carbs. If you play footy or you play any kind of sport, that's actually really handy before games or and, and during games. So that's that's pre, pre-run. Also pre-run is hydration. You should be hydrating, you know, a, a day before. And I would recommend getting some kind of electrolytes, um, it's just like a really quick and easy way to replenish your stores and like feel sane again before, during and after a run. So like it's a lot of salt, a lot of sodium. That is what your body's sweating out. So you need to replace it. So I'd look at any kind of um, supplements for that. Sorry, electrolytes for that. And then also on top of that is protein. Now I am sponsored by My Protein. So if you guys want to pick anything up, you can use code Lewis at, uh, at the store or just the link in my bio. Uh, that'll get you a hectic discount count as well. But... Um, yeah, protein's a, a funny one and it's something that you pr- should probably start taking seriously if you're not already. Uh, it's going to make exponential gains, exponential progress and um, I'm using the My Protein Clear Way. It essentially tastes a little bit like, um, I was about to say chlorine, that's not what I meant. It tastes a little bit like cordial 
Um, and it's just like 25 grams of protein in one scoop, which is absolutely crazy. Um, so I'd check out clear way, have that after your runs. Um, and then like, think about protein timing. So having, you know, 30 grams of protein every two hours within like your window of eating is, is generally what people recommend. So there you go. Got a question here. They say, can you please keep this anonymous? Are you single? Mm, Good question. I am very single, yeah. Nah, super single, actually. Got a, a big year ahead and um, I don't know, this, the second I – sorry, this isn't really a running question. So let me just preface this by I understand who my audience is. I know I've got a lot of mums listening. So you know what? As I speak this through, I'm asking you for help. If you can pick anything up for me or you've got any tips for me in regards to my dating life, you just let me know. But – to break it down for you, mumsies, and everyone else that's listening, I was in a long-term relationship for four years and then she broke up with me, broke my heart. Best thing to have ever happened to me. That was two years ago when she broke up with me. Best thing to have ever happened to me because I needed to essentially grow up and not be so dependent on one person and just be comfortable sitting in my own skin. Then it's been two years of kind of mucking around, not going to lie. I've met some people along the way some great people, like some really fantastic people. I've mucked around a few people as well. Um, And now I'm kind of at the point like, yeah, I'd I'd love a relationship, but I'm so like, I'm so not willing to compromise at this stage of my life that I'd just be mucking people around. Uh, I saw a TikTok the other day and this is getting really deep. So sorry if you're running. I saw a TikTok the other day and it was um, about like men requiring like not getting enough affection in society. Now, I've had plenty of affection, so don't, don't get me wrong, but seeking affection and genuinely just needing to be held or needing to be hugged and them looking for sex in that regard. So I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if that's me. It's probably something to look at, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very single and I, I feel like I'm ready for a relationship and then often I'll get, you know, into like a thing with someone and then I get like pushback. I don't know. I I just, I feel like I'm, I'm not ready for it. And then I go, why am I doing this? I've also got like all these crazy things coming up this year, which I can't talk about and you guys will figure it out soon. But like that limits my ability to, you know, get into a relationship as well. And I don't know, it's, it's all crazy. So if you have any tips for me and you're listening, um, I'd love for some dating advice tips. Maybe we could get a bit of a runner's dating app going or a runner's dating thing and, you, and we can all go for runs together and fucking kiss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I don't know what we're doing here. Anyway, so, yeah, there, there you go. There's a bit of dating, there's a bit of running for you. Um, I'd love some advice from you guys. Also, I'd love some help on kind of what you want with these podcasts. I'm keen to keep doing the running stuff. We've got an awesome guest next week. I've locked him in and um, we're going to keep going from there. So a bit of a shorter one today. Thank you guys so much for listening. I know I rambled a little bit. Also, I want to get more involvement from you guys. I know these episodes is just like, I saw my dad about this, who's like been in radio a fair bit. And he's like, it's just a lot of talking and it's just a lot of my voice and it's a lot of up here, you know? So like, and I say that with my hand held high, like it's up here the whole time. It's like we're turned to 10. So I feel like you need some audible rest in between these episodes. I want to bring something in, whether that's just like more input from you guys or like some kind of external thing where I take you for a run on like the podcast for 10 minutes and talk you through it. But let me know what you guys would want with that. And um, I'm super thankful for the community we've got, you know, like this podcast hits the charts every week and like you guys run it up and and it's, it's the regulars, it's the people who are here every single week and like you're tuning in every week with your run. Um, man, it means so much. So yeah, thank you for that and stick with us. We're, we're only growing and hopefully I can keep bringing you the right content. Thanks so much for listening. I love you, bye.